why the Leica M system? What is it all about? What does the M stand for? And why did it change everything for me? In this video, I want to talk about the Leica M system. The body, the buttons, the handling and a few accessories. But for this one, let's go out. I already did a video about rangefinder cameras in general, about how they work, about the rangefinder window and all that stuff. In this video, I want to talk more about the Leica M philosophy. So if you think about entering the M world, this could be the video for you and this could help you to make a final decision. It is definitely the video I was looking for when I first thought about getting into the M world. What I first want to talk about is size. The fantastic thing about the M system is that it's very small and handy. I have here my whole M kit. A camera, body, four lenses. All in an Ona Bowery bag. The whole thing only weighs a little bit more than three kilos. So it's very flexible and I can just carry it everywhere. So from a system philosophy point of view, I would say it's the size. It's small, it's inconspicuous, it's flexible, you can take it everywhere. If you're coming from a DSLR system or if you're coming from a mirrorless system with the usual big size autofocus lenses, it's a downscaling that is so fantastic. And it helps you to take the camera more with you because it's smaller, you just can grab it and you can take it with you. And even if you just go out for a walk, this little three kilo bag, it's no problem to carry around. And if it's too heavy for you, just leave three lenses at home. Just take one lens and take the camera around and you're good to go. It's so flexible. Which brings me, of course, first to the camera body. As I mentioned, it's small. And when we're talking about the body, I can say it is very robust, it's very stable. It's uh, something you like to hold in your hands. And if the whole bag is too heavy for you, you can just easily take the camera with you like a little shoulder bag, and then it's always here. And this is something you almost don't feel. I have here a 35 millimeter lens mount, and you of course can have other lenses that some are heavier, the longer you get, they're heavier, but a 35 or a 50, absolutely perfect you almost don't feel that you're carrying something and then there is a accessory to the body which is the thumb support that i have mounted here can take this away can show you you just slide it on the hot shoe and then you have the even better grip for the camera there are also hand grips for the m system i don't use them because i sometimes have a half case a protective case on the camera but I like the thumb support. I think it gives me a very good hold for the camera. From a philosophy point of view, I think we can talk about durability. It's stable. It feels important. It's more a tool than a gadget. Of course, when we're talking about the body, we need to talk about its functionality and, of course, its buttons. I'll start first with the ISO dial. This button is fixed and to change your settings, you need to pull it out and then you can turn it. If you turn it until A and fix it here, the ISO is set on automatic. And if you want to have a fixed ISO, which I mostly use, just pull the wheel, you turn it and then you just press it down and now it's fixed and it cannot change. The next dial I want to talk about is the shutter dial. This is this one here. This goes very easily. So also again, when you set on A, it's automatic. And when you turn the wheel on the shutter speed you want to, you just have to be sure it's where this little dash is. The problem with this is that sometimes you touch it and you don't want to touch it and then it changes and you don't see that you're changing it. I have seen people, especially journalists, if they want to shoot at a fixed shutter speed, they tape it with a little gaffer tape so it won't move. Can do that. I have never done that. The next button I want to talk about is this one here. This is the focus button. 
You're asking now, but isn't it a manual focusing system? How does it have a focus button? It's actually when you're working with live view with the display here, or if you put on a Visoflex viewfinder, then you have an EVF, it's electronical. And to zoom in and help you check the focus, you just press this button and then it does that. So this is something I rarely use because I don't use a Visoflex that often. I try to work with the rangefinder window. Then we come to the shutter release button, which is of course this here. And here you turn the camera on and off. The release button has a little screw mount here where you can add some soft buttons, which are more for me an aesthetical thing. I don't use that. But what I use sometimes is a remote release cable, which you just screw in here. And then if the camera is on a tripod, you can take pictures without touching the camera, which helps you when you do long exposure stuff that you don't erupt the camera when you release it. So you don't have to touch it. I totally like that. It has also because it's, the, it's really a cable. I like it because it has this old feel and this feeling of using an, an, an initial M camera from back in the whenever. The next button I want to talk about is this button here. This is for your rangefinder window selection. So if you have a 35 millimeter lens mounted, for example, you have the frame in the rangefinder that marks the 35 millimeter focal length. And if you push this little thing here, it changes the frames. So you can preview other focal lengths and decide if you maybe want to change your lens. Then of course we have here the lens release button. Just press it and then you can take off the lens. This is, I think, classical with every camera system around. On the flip side, we have the display, of course, and then we have three buttons here. Those are varying on the model you have. When you have an older M camera, it has up to five buttons. I have the M10R, so the M10 series, they have the three buttons. The M11 also has three buttons. And then you have here, of course, the basically like a joystick so you can navigate through the menu. And here, of course, we have the rangefinder viewfinder, where you look through. I have also mounted here a little diopter ring because my eyes are not that good anymore. It's this little, it's also an accessory. I have minus 1.5, and then you screw this here on. And then you have the two rangefinder windows here in front of the camera. This is your viewfinder and this is the rangefinder focus window. From a system philosophy point of view, I would say the word is simplicity. It only has the buttons you need. It has a very reliable auto modus. So if you turn everything to auto, you are really safe. I think overall the body represents the core of photography. If you like this video so far, please subscribe to not miss a future video. Speaking of simplicity, let's talk about the menus of the M cameras. Of course, this varies through the different generation of M cameras. Mine, the M10 camera, has overall the same menus. You press men the menu button and then you can access the menu. The M11 ones, the newer ones, have the same menu style than the SL and Q cameras. And I'm, of course, as camera progresses, they also will sometimes make few changes to the menus as we go on. But I can think what I can say overall, the Leica menus are the best menus in all of the cameras I have worked with so far. And here I also think the philosophy is don't take the camera itself so important, the person taking the picture is important. The next topic is probably the most famous one, is the rangefinder window. Again, the rangefinder window is, are those two windows in front here. And when you look through the viewfinder, you can see, of course, the rangefinder system. You have the frame lines and you have your focusing field. The way it basically works is the content within the superimposed rectangle in the middle of the frame need to exactly cover each other. Then your subject is in focus. And then there's also something I can say that goes through all the Leica lenses. If you turn the focusing ring here, if you turn it to your left side, the focus moves closer. If you move it to the right side, the focus goes far away. So if you want to go to infinity, just push it on the right side until, until it naturally stops. 
and then your focus will be in infinity. If you want to have the closest focus possible, just turn it to the left side until it stops. When you're practicing a little bit with the focus here and when you're getting a little bit better, you realize that there are some things you can do to be faster with your autofocus. For example, you can try to estimate how far away the subject is you want to take the picture of. I'm looking at the bench here and I think this bench is around six meters away from me. So what I can do is I can turn my focusing ring to six meters and this could be my starting point. And then I probably have very fast, I have my picture. When we're talking about the system philosophy of the rangefinder system, of course, it's just a system. It's a technical thing that camera uses to focus. But from a philosophical point of view, I would say the rangefinder focusing system changed my photography and actually changed a little bit my life because it slowed me down and it gave me more control over my pictures because I needed to think more about them. And I have more time for composition because I really think about what is important in the picture, what is the story I want to tell. And then I am sometimes shift the focus because I realize, oh, I see something different now where I have like had a little bit time during the focusing process looking at my composition and I realize hmm, there's something that is even more interesting or that tells my story even better if I focus on that. So I would say overall it just slowed me down. It gave me more focus on my photography. So I'm a big fan of the rangefinder system. I was very afraid of it at first but now I'm a really, really big fan of it. But of course you can say it's not easy, it's hard, it, you have to learn it. It's something that progresses with you as you go on with this system of the camera. If you want to use it a little bit more like a point and shoot camera, there is a other possibility to focus and this is song focusing. And even though I explained it in my other video, I'm going to explain it again because I think it is something very cool. We have here, our scale on the lens. And we see here the distances, the different distances of our focus points. When we now, for example, set our aperture to an aperture of eight, I have a 35 millimeter lens mounted. I can see now I have eight here and I have eight here. What I basically need to do now is I need to turn infinity, the infinity mark, which is here, I need to turn it to eight. And now I can check on the other side, I am between two and three. So I can say everything from around two point something meters until infinity will now be in focus. And now even though the little rectangle in the middle of the rangefinder window is not covering the subject, everything between two point something meters and infinity will be in focus. And now it's a point and shoot. And I don't have to think about focus anymore. I just can compose my picture and I can take the picture and it will be in focus. And for street photography, this is something very cool. And from a philosophy point of view, of course, zone focusing is the ultimate point and shoot system because you don't have to care about focus anymore. You even can do pictures you don't compose at all. You just like point and press and then you have a picture and it will be in focus. It is especially cool for street photography when you want to do also like a little bit more hidden stuff that is not so intrusive. So you can be a little bit more distanced and people will not recognize when you take a picture. And before I finish off this video, I want to talk about the Visoflex. But this I'm going to do in the studio. I want to talk about one more thing I already talked about. The Visoflex, this little accessory that you put on your hot shoe of your M camera and you have a actually mirrorless camera as you know, except of the autofocus. This is the little accessory, it comes in this pouch. I have the Visoflex 020 which is compatible with the M10 series. The M11 series has a new one, it's I think called the Visoflex 2. Which is weird because I think it's the Visoflex 3 because for the earlier M's there was another Visoflex. Who cares? That's what they call it. So I have the camera and then I'll take off my thumb support. Those two accessories do not work together. 
And then this Visoflex has a cover. I take the cover off. There you can see the contacts. Then we just slide it onto the hot shoe. One of the cool things about the Visoflex is that you can tilt it. Because the M cameras up until now don't have a tilting screen, you can with the live mode on and not through the rangefinder, you are able to basically not take a picture like this, you can take a picture like this and by looking down. For me, it has also a little bit a nostalgic thing because on the old, very, very old cameras, you were looking down to take the picture. When you turn on live mode, when you play back a picture or when you press on the menu button, it's basically what happens on the display of the camera is what's happening in the Visoflex as well. So what's the system philosophy of the Visoflex? I think it's just an accessory that has been added because we are just in those times where we use EVFs. So it gives the camera another possibility to use it. In the end, I think it's a rangefinder camera. I use the Visoflex only when I mount really wide angle lenses or when I do shoot telephoto lenses. I would say starting with the 90 millimeter lens, for me, it gets harder to hit the focus, especially when the object is moving and there sometimes I use the Visoflex as an additional help. But probably I should leave it at home and should get better on working with the rangefinder. And there is one question I did not answer yet, and this is what does the M stand for? It stands for the German word Messsucher, which basically means rangefinder. At least this is what I could find in the internet. Maybe that's not true. I always thought it was because of manual. I don't know, but yeah, probably in the time when the M was created, there was no autofocus at all. Messsucher, rangefinder, makes much more sense. So what's the overall M system philosophy? In my world, I would say it's about decision making. Every photo is a decision. And with the M camera, it feels like this. Because you're not just pointing and do 100 pictures per second. You are composing your picture. You have to think about focus. You have to, it's a way to get there. So it's all about decisions. And I think this is something that helped me a lot also in my life because a life is full of decisions as well. So in my creative process, I also need to make a lot of decisions and working with the M camera and going just out for also recreational purposes, just go out with an M camera and finding stuff and making creative decisions and also sometimes decide to not make decisions. It's also a decision. Freed me up in my creative thinking. And I think even to be able to sit in front of a camera and talk to you guys and make videos about my passion, my passion of photography, it has a lot to do with me starting in working with a rangefinder camera because it somehow helped me to overcome creative fears and it also helps me sometimes when I have like, when I should write something and I don't find a start, I take my camera, I go out, I clear my head, I make a few pictures. And most of the times with the M camera, something happens when I do that. Because as I said, it has a lot to do with the decisions I have to make, with decisions the camera is forcing me to make. And when I come home and look at the pictures, it is also very honest. So the M system is also a very honest system because it tells you where you have to get better and where you have to improve. And it also shows you where you are really good at. And those are the moments that are also like very satisfying. And I don't know if you have the same kind of satisfaction with an autofocus camera that does everything for you. So I, for me, and I can highly encourage, try it out. For me, it changed everything. I did not go over lenses in this video, but if you're interested in M lenses, check out one of those two videos. Stay curious.